If you haven't dealt with inductor saturation, you might think inductors look something like this. If I were to give one a step input in voltage, I'd have a linear increase in current with respect to time. But in a lot of cases, this isn't true. In a lot of cases, inductance is a function of current. Here I'm showing the same step input but on an inductor that has a saturation current where it transitions from a higher inductance to a lower inductance at a specific magnetic flux density. My idea is to offset the magnetic flux so that it starts out at some negative value. That way you have to supply enough current that it brings the magnetic flux all the way to zero and then to its saturation density. I think you could even extend this flux down far enough in the negative area to where it would begin in a saturated region, continue on in another linear region where it has high inductance, and become saturated again at the end. Here's my setup for testing this idea. I've got a resistor hooked up to an oscilloscope probe so that I can measure the current through this ferrite inductor as I'm switching it using this MOSFET in my function generator. I can put a constant current through this set of windings to create an offset on the magnetic flux through the core. Here we can see the voltage across the resistor, which should be proportional to the current through the inductor. You can see the very small region here where the inductor is acting ideally, followed by this tremendous region where it's saturated. Now if I start the DC offset and turn on my power supply, you can see that the saturation current increases just slightly. But if I continue to increase that current, the bias current, you can see the saturation current continue to increase. As well as getting to that region I was talking about where it starts out saturated, goes into its linear region, and then becomes saturated again right before the transistor switches it off again. Now you might think that I'm cheating somehow, that to keep a constant current flowing through this side would require an even larger inductor. And you very well might be right. This is one hell of an inductor. Because it requires such a tremendous inductor, using a constant current source to create the bias might be good for experimentation, but if this is going to be practical at all, I think I'll need a permanent magnet, like this one, which I pulled out of this. It'd be nice if I could use a rare earth magnet, but those tend to be conductive, and so I'll have a heater instead of an inductor. A problem that I found with these magnets is that they're not polarized north-south or north-south they have some other odd polarity to them. And so what I ended up doing was demagnetizing it using a more powerful magnet and then remagnetizing it by putting some huge amount of current through this coil while the magnet was stuffed away inside of it. My original plan was to cut this ferrite core open and stuff this magnet inside of it. Ferrite is pretty difficult to cut. So instead I've tried to magnetize this core by pulsing a huge amount of current through this set of windings. Hope it works. Here's the current waveform with the polarity wired up one way. It looks to me like it saturates around 300 millivolts. Here's the current waveform with the polarity switched. It looks exactly the same. This might be harder than I thought. I'm betting that the ferrite core didn't get as magnetized as I was hoping it would. I might have to wait until I've got some beefier tools in my Dremel to finish this one up.